Installation and commissioning of Ensto's auger switch is a simple operation. Performed in accordance with standard practice by authorized and trained personnel. It involves methodically following the procedure and adhering to a number of specific points associated with this kind of equipment. Failure to follow these instructions could prevent the device from operating properly in the future. Work is performed with the system powered off. All safety precautions must be taken. Everything is delivered in a single wooden crate. In order to best protect the equipment, it must be unpacked on site. Enstone of Exia recommends disposing of the packaging materials used for the August solution in accordance with the current rules for selective sorting. Begin by correctly positioning the crate at the foot of the pole, thereby ensuring a good start to installation. Check the marking on the crate to identify the symbol for the transformer and the lower section of the switch. Before placing the crate on the ground, identify the position of the source substation. Place the crate on the side of the pole previously determined. Align it with the foot of the pole with the switch's control axis towards the pole. Before unpacking it, check that the crate has not been damaged during transport. Remove the lid of the crate containing the switch. The switch includes a voltage transformer for permanently powering the monitoring and control cabinet. Identify the transformer symbol and check that the diagram engraved on the tank depicting the wiring is really on the source substation side. In case the threaded rods are not provided with the equipment, Enstone of Exia recommends using M12 hot dip galvanized threaded rods. Remove the sides of the switch's crate. Do not yet touch the switch, which is protected by a wooden frame. Remove the monitoring control cabinet with its maintenance wallet containing the installation manual, user manual, protocol instructions, replacement fuses, and hardware needed to install it on the pole. All the installation precautions appear on the panel attached to the switch's wooden frame. Lift the wooden frame switch assembly vertically using a suitable lifting system. Place it on the ground. The vertical and horizontal wedging of the wooden frame in the base of the packaging allows, during transport and handling operations, to optimise the switch's protection, and in particular the protection of the six bushings. The wooden frame protects the switch's operating shaft, situated in the lower section. Never handle the switch by its bushings. To install the switch, trace its position on the pole. The upper section of the switch must be 1.5 meters below the line. Completely remove the wooden frame.
release the cable bundle. Raise the switch to the intended position on the pole using a suitable lifting device. Guide the device in order to prevent the bushings from hitting the pole. Permanently attach it using four threaded rods. All the information and product characteristics appear on the nameplate attached to the lower section of the switch. Position the lightning arrestor brackets one meter below the line. Permanently attach them on the pole using two threaded rods. Assemble the lightning arrestors on their brackets using the hardware supplied with each lightning arrestor. When using lightning arrestors without disconnector devices, orient the damage indicator of each lightning arrestor towards the ground. Using the hardware supplied, equip the manual backup control with a U-shaped bracket and its earthing stud. With the aid of the relevant manual, fit the manual backup control at the bottom of the pole at approximately 1m20 above the ground, on the same side as the switch using two threaded rods. Here nothing is complicated, however, an incorrect fitting could result in an impossible functioning of the manual operations. Fit the insulator on the top female tube with one hole. Caution! Excessive tightening could cause this part to break. Bolt the assembly to the control shaft checking that its position complies with the label stuck on the cover, with the flat surface towards the pole side. Measure the distance between the bottom of the top tube and the manual backup control. Assemble the intermediate male tube with two holes, with the female tube with seven holes. The total length of the fitting assembly must be 40 cm longer than the distance previously measured. Place the rotary bearing of the manual backup control in the electric mode position. Engage the rod assembly on the top tube side. Leave the two tubes free and sliding. Then, on the manual backup control side, engage the operating lever through hole facing the operator itself facing the structure. To check that the position indicator situated on the underside of the device is operating correctly, perform a manual opening and closing operation. To install the monitoring and control cabinet, equip it with two U-shaped brackets using the hardware supplied. Pay attention to the positioning of the sealing washers between the U-shaped bracket and the cabinet in order to prevent water entering into the cabinet. Attach the cabinet at the chosen height using four threaded rods. Please note that various items must be installed using a spirit level in order to be correctly aligned with the vertical pole. All equipment must be connected to the earth for exposed conductive parts, 
with an earth value lower than 30 ohms using minimum 25 mm square copper braided cables. Earthing points identified by the earth symbol are provided. Cross arm supporting the network on the lightning arrestor brackets on the switch beneath the monitoring and control cabinet with a diameter M12. On the manual backup control with a diameter M12. After measuring the distance between the NEMA lugs of each of the bushings, lightning arrestors and the line, cut six cable lengths. The switch and lightning arrestors are connected to the line using six jumpers made from Almalek cable and six dual holes aluminium crimp lugs with a cross section of 117mm square. Place one crimp lug on one end of each of the six jumpers. Each jumper prepared in this way will be attached to the NEMA lugs on the bushings using galvanized steel HM12 bolts, washers and nuts. Enstore recommends using an acid-free grease to protect contacts. Tighten to a torque of 40 Newton meters plus or minus 5 Newton meters. The bushings must not be restricted during and after the tightening operation. Attach the cables to the lightning arrestors using the hardware supplied. Tighten to a torque of 20 Newton meters, which is the maximum recommended by Ensto, as stated in the manual. Finally, connect to the line using the client's own specific connection equipment. In order to guarantee additional natural water tightness, the connection cables originating from the switch are attached to the body of the device. Secure them along the pole using 20 mm stainless steel strip, not supplied. The monitoring and control cabinet is connected by means of cable grommets arranged on the underside of the cabinet. Feed the cables through and cut them to the right length. 7 core CT cable, 2 core AC power cable, 10 core motorization cable. Please refer to the appended installation manual to create the connections on the three respective connectors, which can be unplugged to facilitate the operation. Connect the motorization cable to the 12 pin connector. 
Make sure you do not mix up wires 6 and 9. Connect the CT cable to the 7 pin connector. Remove the green and yellow wire. Please note that plug 5 is not connected. Connect the AC power cable to the 2 pin connector. Caution! The blue wire must be connected to the neutral terminal marked N. Tighten the cable grommets. In the case of a long storage, the battery must be recharged every six months. Before installing the cabinet, ensure that the recharging date has not expired. Using a computer equipped with an Ethernet port and a standard Ethernet cable, you can access the embedded software in the cabinet CPU. To access the software and configure the fault detection, the auto sectionalizing and communication functions, please refer to the appended operating manual. The Visio 2 equipment developed by Enstone of Exia allows you to check that fault detection and auto sectionalizing function operates correctly. This equipment is sold separately. The device is now fully installed. To check that the position indicator situated on the underside of the device is operating correctly, perform a manual opening and closing operation. Return the lever to the intermediate position which permits electrical operations by the cabinet. Slide it into the housing and padlock the linkage and lever assembly in position. Now perform the following electrical operations. Closing. By pressing two buttons at the same time, black and red. And opening. By pressing two buttons at the same time, black and green. If there are no anomalies, the august switch can be powered up. Check the low voltage power supply originating from the integrated transformer in the switch tank. During operation the device can be controlled manually or electrically. The manual backup control and its lever can be padlocked in one of the three positions an intermediate position which permits electrical operations and two end positions that prevent them padlocked open padlock closed the device does not require any manual maintenance However, we recommend that you check the following at least once a year. The integrity of equipment. Damage, for example, caused by vandalism. The immobilization of the manual backup control in the normal operating position. The integrity of equipment earthing. Manual backup control, lightning arresters, switch, and cabinet. The integrity of the switch's connection to the network. Connection of NEMA lugs, lightning arresters, line. The integrity of the connections of cables originating from the switch and cabinet. The visibility of the position indicator. The mechanical integrity of the cabinet. The functional integrity of the cabinet. Equipment on standby. No abnormal alarms. The integrity of battery connections. The state of the fault indicator on the surge arrestor. The state of fuses.
perform a battery test. The Vizio 2 equipment allows you to check that fault detection and simulation of automatic opening caused by a voltage drop are functioning correctly. A simulator allows you to check that the cabinet is functioning correctly without triggering a real operation of the switch. The motorized mechanism in the lower section is protected by an IP66 waterproof cover. The cover can be removed in order to easily replace the 6.3 amp fuse, which protects the secondary side of the medium voltage transformer. The cover should be refitted with the greatest care, in particular around the seal. Please note that the operation should be performed with an MV powered off network in dry weather. In normal operation, the lightning arrestor returns to its initial state after smoothing power surges. However, there may be direct lightning strikes on the lines, which exceed its absorption capacities. In this case, the lightning arrestor will short circuit. The lightning arresters are equipped with a fault indicator. This flag is visible from the ground, facilitating location and therefore replacement of the defective lightning arrestor. In the upper section of the cabinet, a compartment equipped with a radio mounting plate, 12 volt power cable and a data cable will facilitate the move towards the network's remote control by the addition of dedicated communication equipment for various existing SCADA systems. The cabinet is equipped with an N to BNC type socket connector, which will allow an antenna to be connected in the future. Ensto's teams are at your disposal to help you determine the best configuration for your equipment based on your specification.